Cool. Uh, thank you very much. And I really appreciate uh, being here. Um, and I really appreciate your time. Um, so I'm more than happy to ask, answer any of your questions. Uh, I'm looking mostly at the Discord channel right now. Um, my beard is awesome, and I'm not on a boat, but I wish I was. Uh, but uh, just kind of, uh, I didn't plan this out here. Uh, but um, you got you got to respect the beard here. So uh, on more serious questions here, uh, yeah, I guess uh, what can I do to help answer? And so Markov, it really has very little mass actually in it uh, too. Uh, it's just uh, multiplication. So uh, if you can do multiplication, there's, there's not even any division. Um, so you just look at the probability of word, one letter falling after another letter, falling after another letter there. And uh, the more letters you have, the, the higher probability it usually is. Uh, Omen uh, gets a little bit more complicated because uh, they have this idea behind it called levels. Uh, but that then you, you do it with some multiplication and you just do addition instead. So the, the final level, the password, is uh, summing all the levels across it. Uh, and the reason why you want to do that is because that's much faster than trying to do uh, a more traditional Markov attack like you would see in John Rip Ripper Markov mode. Uh, but there's a million different ways that you can do uh, Markov. So I could talk to you all day about that if we want to just go ahead and um, get into that. Um, Hashcat needs to update its Markov ability, though, uh, because it is probably, the uh, of all the, the algorithms, the worst. But Hashcat's really fast, so it can get away with that. And I know you're just trying to be cheeky about that, but I, here's a <laughs> just trying to give you an answer to it because I'm really uh, enjoy it. Um, it would be nice. Uh, the challenge is that the the, the guest generation port could pro probably be. Um, uh, extracted out, but uh, figuring out what the kind of rule to use uh, is uh, pretty much single threaded, unfortunately. Uh, so, uh, and that's really what takes all the time is it's just trying to figure out which of the rules is currently the most probable uh, in order to uh, run. And that's why it takes so much memory because it's basically uh, building a, a probability queue of all different probabilities. And it's going through, it has a kind of this tree type of a uh, format there. So long story short, uh, I wish I could figure out how to do that. Uh, but where you're probably better off doing is instead of trying to generate all the guesses in probability order, uh, you could actually just go ahead and generate guesses behind a, a, a different probability threshold. Say so all these guesses that are, you know, higher probability than this level here. And in that case, you could absolutely go ahead and multi-thread it uh, for uh, GPU. So I've actually talked to some people about uh, potentially getting this in a way so that you're not doing probability order, but you set that threshold. And you could actually run this in the GPU. And it's the fact that GPUs have more memory now means you can start putting the, the base grammar inside GPU as well uh, to help uh, speed that up. So and I'm, I'm sorry, I, sh I should ask, answer, uh, re uh, respond to the question here. Yeah. So the question was, uh, could I run multiple PCFGs at once uh, on multiple different GPUs? Uh, so the short answer is uh, uh, theoretically, yes. Uh, but I could definitely use some help in actually uh, coding that up uh, with somebody who's smarter than I am. So does anyone else have any questions here? Or I could just uh, uh, keep on rambling here, too. Uh, so uh, uh, one nice thing is uh, being able to uh, run this against the password list that you've already, uh, you're, you're currently cracking, too, uh, because it does do a pretty good job of stemming that and creating some really interesting uh, input dictionaries uh, for you to be able to use. Uh, so if you're kind of going ahead and um, doing kind of like a you know a fingerprint attack, you just kind of run it around again there. Uh, it can actually extract some really uh, useful uh, bits for that to, to keep on launching against uh, people. So since I got like nine minutes late, uh, left here, unless someone else uh, asks a question. Oh, ramble away. OK, so, sounds good here. So the, the question is, or I guess what I could start talking about is where uh, password crack uh, PCFGs are kind of going in the future. Uh, so uh, one of my uh, big goals is I really would like to be able to get incorporated into Hashcat. Um, I started you know, brainstorming that quite a while ago. Uh, that's the, part of the reason also why it uses the, the compiled C version. Uh, I wrote it in the first place was because uh, Hashcat, for some reason, does not actually run in Python because it's fast, I guess. Uh, so 
that is, you know, ultimately the kind of the end goal uh, for that that effort there is to actually incorporate it into Hashcat uh, as a, a new cracking mode. Uh, the initial way I'm going to start looking at it is actually having it run as a, uh, Adam calls it a slow guesser mode, which pretty much def defines this exactly. Uh, so I want to be able to incorporate that as part of the, the Hashcat slow guessing uh, modes that you can uh, uh, add in. Eventually, though, I would like to be able to start going ahead and seeing whether I can go ahead and parallelize the um, uh, the way it generates guesses and put it into the GPU to make it much, much faster. Uh, so there's other options too that potentially like you could um, uh, basically do pre, what really slows it down is generating all those rules. So in an older version, I had actually had uh, the ability to go ahead and pre-compute pre all those rules and um, be able to save those to disks. Uh, so you could actually then completely paralyze it if you wanted to as well, because there's no rule generation. Uh, so that's another thing I could take a look back at there. Uh, the, the problem is that the rules are really fine grained. Uh, so I almost want to go ahead and in order to reduce the size of, uh, uh, you know, the, the rules on the disk uh, is to uh, make the rules much uh, kind of fatter, essentially. So each rule would correspond to more password guesses. Uh, but that's definitely uh, an option that I'm kind of looking at as well is to make this uh, uh, more feasible to be able to be used. So is there such a thing as a random PCFG rule? Uh, are they human read readable or well geek readable? Uh, so uh, the short answer is yes. Um, uh, so if you hit the this kind of status output of when you're running a, a PCFG uh, a cracking session, you'll kind of print out the uh, text uh, screen of what the current rule uh, set looks like. Um, and it, it looks a lot like a hash cat mask actually. Uh, so um, it just has a few extra different features onto it there. So you'll say something like, uh, like the, uh, I use A uh, for alpha string, uh, but the, uh, it'll like like A5, so you know it's generating like a, a five-letter word, and they'll have a number next to it saying, you know, what the the probable, you know, what the probability or uh, ranking I should say of that five-letter word is. Uh, so uh, it'll say like, you know, the 153rd most probable word, or you know, number one, so it'd be the first most probable word, so that'd be like password. Um, so in that case, you can kind of read it, and then you can see what the capitalization mode is. So it'll say like the most common capitalization mode for this here, and it'll say like you know D2, and then it'll be like a number after that too, which is like the you know the third most common uh, a two letter or two uh, digit number. Uh, so you can kind of look at that and see what that that rule is. Uh, so uh, because the way that happens there, you could absolutely go ahead and go ahead and create a uh, uh, a random uh, rule for that, or you can just kind of look at it and read what it's actually doing. And so you can go back to the grammar and say, okay, what is actually the 143rd, you know, most probable word? And so, okay, so that's the word that it's using. Um, and if the words have the, the same probability, they'll, they'll use just all of them there. So uh, there might be like multiple different words that you only saw in the training set, let's say twice. Uh, so they'd all be used to the same probability in that rule. Um, it can also create, um, uh, when talking about random passwords, uh, some work I did in the past was uh, creating what's called honey words. So these are passwords that look uh, like, um, uh, human passwords and PCFGs are really good for that. So instead of trying to create the most probable password, you do a random walk uh, through the grammar, uh, and that way, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six is still going to be very common. You're going to create that much more often than normal, but you also create some kind of random-looking passwords too. And where this is really useful, for example, is if you're trying to set out a honeypot server uh, and you want to do like a honeypot Active Directory com uh, or uh, a controller. Uh, and you don't want to go ahead and manually create, you know, a thousand different passwords for, you know, different fake users. Uh, so uh, that way uh, you can go ahead and run that and uh, you create passwords that, you know, if you glance at it, it, it looks somewhat real. You know, you're still seeing like the really common passwords. You might see the company names, you know, the most common there. Uh, but uh, you're still seeing some random other stuff as well. Uh, so uh, that's definitely some work. And um, improving upon that is I'd like to be able to create one that uh, or a modification of that where it has a biased random walk. So that way that you can create passwords that look like they all came from the same user. But once again, are, you know, somewhat different. Uh, so that's definitely uh, an area that's kind of fun to play around with. What uh, have you seen in terms of variance between, uh, say, company one and company two? So that's just a question that was asked. Um, and a short answer is um, I really haven't seen that. Um, and by that, I mean uh, I'm a researcher. Uh, this is a hobby for me. So almost every single dump that I've worked with has been, um, I would say, the public dumps. And while there definitely are company passwords that you know, get pushed out there, if you, especially if you look for like NTLM, uh, but uh, uh, 
I'm a researcher, so you'd actually have to ask, you know, someone like, you know, CoreLogic uh, uh, about that there. So I'm not a really good person to answer. And I'm, that's why I'm always really interested in hearing these talks and talking to people who are actually doing this professionally, uh, because uh, they're able to provide me that information there. Uh, but pretty much all I have from that is secondhand. So we're getting to the end here. It looks like there's just a couple more minutes. So if anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to, to ask them. Um, otherwise, I really do appreciate uh, you uh, uh, coming in and you know, viewing this talk. Um, uh, as I said, I'm available on Twitter, uh, at uh, Locky W, L-A-K-I-W. Um, and uh, if you really want to get in touch with me, the best way to do it is uh, submit an issue uh, to the, the GitLab repo. Uh, I really, that's probably the, the best way uh, uh, because I uh, pretty much obsessively track that there. Um, and I'll definitely try to get back to you. Uh, but this is something that I find is really fun, and I really do appreciate you taking an interest in this. Cool, yep, and I'll be on Discord for the rest of the weekend, too. So if anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to pop in there, too.